Huzzah, everybody! I am Ken Meister LP, and welcome to the next Let's Play for this channel. Chrono Trigger. I was about to say Golden Sun the Lost Age for a second, because that was the game I originally had planned next. But uh, due to technical difficulties, I'm going to have to hold out on that one for a bit longer, sadly. Uh, so Chrono Trigger. This was the game I came, at, I came to right after Secret of Mana. And it was the kind of game that set my standards at the time for its characters, its turn-based system, uh, its world-building. Like, because Secret of Mana was an action RPG with a very basic plot. This was the game that kind of really got me invested in, like, getting into JRPGs for their storytelling and such. Because, good lord, like, Chrono's Trigger, Chrono Trigger's story has held up so well to this day. Like, you could probably consider it timeless, if anything. And I think right after that, that's when I started playing, like, the Final Fantasy games. But funny enough, though, I wasn't exposed to Chrono Trigger by the Super Nintendo version or the Virtual Console. Rather, around 2008, they made a Nintendo DS port of this game, which I was able to play on the go for hours on end. It's probably like one of my most um, time-consumed games on that handheld, now that I think about it. I think I put more hours into that than anything else I had for the DS. Um, I think I remember them considering a sequel, like, if the Chrono Trigger on the DS did well, and sadly it did not. In fact, I'm pretty sure most people watching this didn't even know a DS version existed, but... Lo and behold, it does. And that had, like, cutscenes for the PS1 version, and... Uh... Basically some new stuff as well, like, um, endgame maps you can look through for hidden treasure and like an endgame soundtrack and stuff and along with uh, extra post-game dungeons which kind of added to the replayability I feel but we're playing the Super Nintendo version not only because it's the original but um, the writing in this one's also a bit different see in Chrono Trigger for the DS that actually had I think the same translator that did like the GBA ports of the Final Fantasy uh, SNES games this game was translated by Ted Woosley, which you might know as the guy who translated Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy VI. And I made fun of him constantly throughout Final Fantasy, or not Final Fantasy, but uh, Secret of Mana. So this is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> literally, as the screen is showing up. No, I'm just kidding. Quite a ride, literally and figuratively, my friends. Uh, definitely going to be like... Digging up some memories here, because this is definitely, like, one of my favorite RPGs ever. I think I must have played through this one, like, maybe five or six times. So I know it pretty decently well. I think I know this game better than Secret of Mana when I think about it. So, uh... I have poor reaction time. If Mega Man Sunrise was an indication, so... We're gonna put the battle mode on wait... And we're just going to leave our character's name at default. It's going to be our main protagonist of the game. And he's a mute, as we'll be figuring out within a few moments. First 30 seconds of the game, and we're already kind of establishing from the opening shots what is basically going on here. So we got a festival, lots of balloons. using so much plastic <laughs> and helium helium chrono chrono good morning chrono see like it's gonna be so odd for me reading this text because i'm so used to the ds version and this line of dialogue is just gonna be so odd to adjust to which will probably be different for everybody else honestly because most people that i know have played chrono trigger played this snes version I probably should have done that version instead, but I tried the DS emulator out some time ago, and, uh, the music was messed up in that. I don't know why, but, like, the frame rate was fine, but the music was playing at such, such a disoriented speed 
Iron's like, nah. I, I, that would just ruin the presentation. On the plus side, though, it makes the LP go by faster because uh, I do plan to 100% this, but I don't have to worry about extra post-game dungeons, so... Yay, I guess. <laughs> Good lord, it's also been quite some time since we've last done a game with a uh, turn-based-esque um, battle system. Not since... Golden Sun, actually. Good lord. Okay, so... We get to sit here and witness the masterpiece of music that is Nubro Yamato's work. Well, actually, I think Nubro Yamato had some outside help, too. Like, this is definitely, like, one of the most well-known video game soundtracks out there. And for good reason. I can't think of, like, a single song I dislike in this soundtrack overall. Like, I used to, like, whenever I studied back in high school, this would be, like, one of those tracks I'd put on, on YouTube and listen to. Just to kind of, like have me zone out because oh my lord the atmosphere and like the catchiness of this soundtrack is so superb it, it, it is like quite literally like one of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time and i i can't recommend it any more than i'm already exaggerating it out to be so we have a frame named luca we'll be checking out her invention later yes mother So right off the bat, we already have quite a good chunk of land to like go and investigate. You can go off to your next uh, important story um, related point right off the get go if you so please. But there's a lot to do even from the opening prologue. It's kind of outstanding really for its time. You can even like check out the uh, the townsfolk on the bridge going to the Millennium Fair. So yeah, apparently they hold this every thousand years or so. The year is a thousand AD if you sit on this world map long enough. And you want, you want to know one thing I really love about the world map in this game compared to other RPGs? You don't have freaking world, freaking random encounters on this world map. It is a blessing in disguise. Because, good lord, this game kind of spoiled me on that note before I started playing Final Fantasy games. And I come back to this and I'm like, why can not other games take note of this? The, like, the only other game I can think of that did something like this was Terra Enigma, Which I actually wanted to play alongside with this too, but I might, like, tackle that at a later point. I still just, like, finished that game pretty recently and I want to let that settle for a bit before I replay it again. As I'm still, like, relatively new to it somewhat. So, yeah, we pretty much have, like, two whole continents right off the get-go to, like, look at. So, don't mind me. Just showing off the world of Chrono Trigger. No real point to that. And I had to get used to the menu here, because the menu looks completely different in the DS version. So you press X here, you can navigate your menu here. So from what I gather, basically statistics, uh, items, tech, we'll be talking about that later, options, uh, party management, where we go to save our data. I'm probably going to be getting used to it as the playthrough progresses, though, because I'm just... Second nature, man. DS nature is so second nature to me. The best thing about that port too is that it didn't even butcher the music. Like, it had to redo it a bit. The, but the music is still so fine, it's like, it doesn't matter either way. So the way this game kind of takes the tutorial approach is basically like... Okay, so I agree with how this game does tutorial... I don't even get the point of that. <laughs> um, the way this game does tutorial is that, like, you can go into these, like, random buildings and whatnot. And 
they'll have you basically teach they'll have you learn like the basics of the game and whatnot I don't think I should be doing that though I'll just kind of teach it as the game goes it's merry little way but right now we'll explore some of the buildings see what's up I don't see what that why that makes her a brat though Okay, not much to see here. Should probably check the pots and stuff in this game, too, in case there's, like, hidden goodies. I didn't have to worry about that in Secret of Mana, given that, like, um, that wasn't really an issue I had to worry about in that game. Hmm. Foreshadowing much? Oh, yeah, and if we talk to our mother here, we get extra money. We already started off with a decent handful of money right off the get-go, but, uh... Most people tend to forget that the moment they start the game, and I figured I'd... Try not to be the exception to that. <laughs> or I'd try to be the exception to that, rather. Oh, boy. So there's a lot to do, like, right off the get-go. It's kind of overwhelming, really. It's like, I don't even know where to start. So we're just going to come into this house here and raid this place of its uh, replenishables. Free money. Can't really complain about that. And yeah, I don't really feel like having you guys learn the game from there. When again, I exist. So this is our friend's house here. Quite a busy looking place. No telling what goes on in here. But is it really a good idea to snip around though? That's the real question. Oh. Okay then. Well, why aren't you with them then? Spoilers we find out later. Oh my god. This game just throws up so much it's like this game throws so much at you like from the opening it's like hard to not get invested in this game right off the get-go and the best part is it's like you can take it in like all one at a time without having to like overwhelm yourself too or you can just go straight to like the destination without having to worry about all this like Chrono Trigger definitely sets like some of the best pacing I've ever seen out of an RPG Overall, so from here we can check out the vendors and see what they have to sell I'm probably gonna be buying a new sword Was he talking in the third person? So right off the bat we can already replace our existing weapon with something else Why not? <laughs> Okay, buddy. Will do. Really now? Oh, well. That's telling. Doesn't seem like a lot of people support her. And I think we're good for now. So, I'm gonna buy myself a karate guy. Just for the added defense. And I believe... Okay, so we can equip he all of our stuff here on the status screen, just like in the uh, 3DS port. That's good to know. Already upgrading our character. We haven't even actually sat down and fought anything yet. So here you can do a wide variety of mini games, or just go up north and progress the plot. So here, I think if you talk to this guy right here,
Just wait for these guys to finish. Alright, so right here, we can make bets on whoever's going to win this race. And these four random NPCs will run around the courtyard. And whoever wins, we get a decent amount of money, I think. I can't remember. Or actually, no, we get tokens, that's right. Cadillac, why not? Because your name sounds hilarious. Come on, Cadillac. You can do this. Move those stubby legs. No. Well, at least you're not getting last, I wouldn't hope. Ah, oh, man. That blows. Well, it looks like the Steel Runner is making waves, so might as well bet on him. Because we're filthy little cheaters. Yeah, he's still got a good lead going. Look at him go. Uh-oh, little alien guy right there is catching up. Oh. Oh. Well, it looks like the RNG kind of pooped on me. Oh, well. Not even going to worry about that. Okay, that's right. You get silver points. So basically, the silver points uh, you get from these mini games you can use towards uh, stuff in here, and you can play a random assortment of mini games in here using those silver points you just spent and get some awesome prizes. We're not gonna worry about that just yet, though. But if you're feeling very uncreative, you can get silver points one at a time by doing this. No unique animation for that whatsoever. Clever. Oh, got lucky. I didn't even know we had a card. Oh! Hey! Oh, and by the way, for those who didn't watch my Secret of Mana Let's Play, uh, do know that I will only be reading the dialogue I am in the mood to read, or feel like it, or what have you. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be kind of random when I decide to read dialogue or not. I could go this playthrough sometimes reading dialogue, or just never do it like I did in Secret Mana. So, uh, yeah. I'm just kind of an indecisive, unprofessional Let's Player, so don't mind me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, are you okay? No. Okay, so from this point, you have to be very careful of the actions you make after you meet this girl. Because if you so much as do something you feel like is out of your judgment league, uh, it'll come to affect you a bit later. If you have already played Chrono Trigger, you might know what I'm referencing, but for now, Let's try to be the good guy and do as much good deeds as we possibly can. Uh, just to kind of put the game in our favor, so to say. Don't you know? So we're going to talk to her first. Because it actually hurts us if we grab the pedant first and then talk to her. No, yes. You do now. Uh, I guess we just met, though. Huh. Oh. oh, looks like we have another character to name. How you doing, Marl? Yeah, like our character literally does not have any dialogue. He he's kind of meant to be like the player's avatar in this case so aside from like option selects you're not going to be hearing any single word of input from chrono trigger on 
events that uh, matter, I suppose. So I see she's just gonna follow us around for a bit. What's going on over here? Good question. Okay, this mini game is weird because, like, you can't. You're not. Technically, they tell you to press the A button as fast as you can, but you have to press it in kind of like a rhythmic fashion. Like, listen to how I press the A button. Because if you press it too fast, it won't register the input. So, here's how I do it. But yeah, it would have been far worse if uh, I mashed the A button super fast, I'll, as I'll demonstrate. Or uh, no? That's weird. Huh. I guess maybe that's something that felt kind of off in the DS version. Maybe that wasn't something they could have ported they couldn't port over perfectly? That's kind of weird. Hmm. We got this. We're gonna get this minigame, darn it. Darn it, I'm getting old. <laughs> Can't even mash the A button that fast anymore. Yeah, just something to have a little fun with, why not? So let's talk to this girl right here. Ooh? I'm not usually into gossip, but we'll make you an exception. That would be his lunch right there. As tempting as it is, don't take it. Like, seriously, just don't. So that looks like the girl's cat, so we're just gonna take it back to her real quick. I wonder if you can like, okay, no. I wanna stay at a walking pace. You can hold the B button to move faster. For those who didn't know. I mean, Sweet is my last name, after all. Like, she may not reward us here, but again, trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> Watch your actions. Hmm. Oh, so he's only got blades done. Talk to that young lady into selling her patent? No. Oh, and I guess uh, this stuff is good for her too. Might have to take that into consideration later. So from that prompt right there, I think it's because we talked to Melchior, or no, I think it's because we talked to this guy. Once you do that, you can basically progress with the plot. So before we do that, we have like one last thing to show off, 
And that's the battle system. So if we talk to this thing right here. This is basically the tutorial battle. But don't worry. I think you get experience points out of this. So we'll fight them like twice and then move on. So, okay. So this is how the battle system works. You, it's kind of like Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6 in the sense that you have like the gauges to your right there next to it the characters and you wait for it to fill up before you initiate an action so yeah if you played those games before you know what you're getting yourselves into um, so you have tech we haven't learned any tech yet and that's basically like the magic abilities of that game that I'll show off later because those by themselves have uh, quite the explanation required to like really go in depth with uh, so for now, we're just gonna beat up on this robot, and also here's items. So you can use your replenishables. Just press the left and right button to switch between characters that you want to initiate actions for. Uh, it's not like other games where you press the X button to switch between characters. You, you literally just press left and right, and you can, like, switch between them. Which is super useful, by the way. Especially for initiating text later on. And just party management in general. So. He's gonna be our little ragdoll. One thing to pay attention to as well is that uh, pay attention to, like, the enemy's positioning. Because that'll play, like, a, a vital part in, like, strategizing, like, your method for attacking the enemies later on. It's like a new layer of, like, depth to the traditional, like, battle systems we've had in Final Fantasy. Where you can't just press the attack button and win. You kind of have to wait for them to, like, be at a set distance. And while that doesn't matter right now, again... We'll be tech talking about more of that once we get into techs. So we're going to fight him one more time. Just got to leave and then come back. In my opinion, if you're doing the mini games here in that tent, the best way to grind silver points up is by fighting this robot here. <laughs> it's like free... It's basically a free 15 silver points, and it, especially like if you plan to do some of these uh, mini games later in the game, like this enemy here is so weak that it, it, it's basically like the easiest method up in the world to like get these points imaginable. That karate guy is already helping out quite a bit. Oh, jeez. About to kill off Krona already. I see right there, like it said, it's too far away to attack. So if he was close to us after we attacked him, he probably would have punched us in the face for doing that. Again, positioning, enemy positioning is super important in this game as far as strategy is concerned. Not really. It's kind of boring actually. So yeah, I just wanted to get that free level up out of the way. I think we got some tech off of that too, didn't we? Okay, so let's head off and see Luca's new invention. Ah, uh, but first, Marla wants some candy. 
Now, you could leave, but again, watch your actions. Everybody here is going to judge you for that later. <laughs> So let's be a nice host. Well, that sounds like 50 times more exciting than anything else that's going on here. Or at least it, her father has confidence in her work. It kind of makes me mad that, like, her parents have basically have like the generic NPC sprites like it's a nitpick I know but that just annoys me to no end <laughs> everybody's making fun of her glasses what in the world is this the 90s oh wait I'd imagine. If what everybody here is saying is true, then I don't think I'd want to be caught in that explosion for all the good that's worth. <laughs> oh god, even she knows. Fine, I'll be your training dummy. Her glasses are still amazing. <laughs> oh? Well, I'm surprised you're not jealous. <laughs> Unless he's asexual. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, it worked. I don't see what you're so worried about. Man, she has like all the momentum in the world. I wish I had her motivation. <laughs> Begin energy transfer. What's happening? My pet is... it's... Oh boy. It doesn't work well with shiny objects in interaction with it, apparently. That's no good. Well, that's a setup for a plot if there ever was one. <laughs> Luca, where is she? Show's over, folks. Let's head along now. And not another word was said. Let's go spread the gossip again. <laughs> hmm. What? But do you know what that pedant is made out of, though? She's so familiar. I know I've seen her somewhere. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Uh, I see she's just gonna repeat her dialogue there. Oh, we can just walk through irrelevant NPCs, apparently. <laughs> well, only one thing to do. We're the main protagonist, so we need to go after her. Sure, I don't really have much of an established backstory, but let's try to build one. We don't really know why we're doing this either. I, I 
can't even really give an explanation to all this. Again, I think this is probably just because they wanted Chrono to be your avatar. So, like, his decisions are ultimately yours. Alright, Marl. I only met you, like, five minutes ago, but... We're coming for ya! Hmm. Well, I mean, you don't have a pendant. How do you, How on earth are you gonna get that to work, exactly? Oh boy, that's kinda trippy to look at. Shiny colors. Look at all the blue and this twisty twirlies. And we're in a we're in a forest apparently. And we have I suppose our first real fight. So now that we got ourselves warmed up, let's go ahead and beat these guys up to a pulp. And have we learned any tech? No? Not yet. Okay. Let's just attack these guys like any other traditional RPG. Mash that attack button. Go! Okay, so that's what basically influences. So, with each enemy uh, defeat, not only do you get experience points, you get tech points. And those tech points are used towards uh, learning those set abilities. So right here, we got Cyclone. And we can right off the bat see what we need to learn next. Uh, so we need 87 tech points before we can learn Slash. And this is how we learn like magic and new abilities and so forth. And I'll talk more about, like, how the tech works. Because there's more to it than just pressing the button and initiating it like any other traditional magic and other RPGs. There's kind of, like, some forethought you have to put into it before initiating said move. Or no, I guess we could demonstrate it here. Okay, so Cyclone here, it kind of has, like, a field of uh, effectiveness for how far or where it works. So, let's wait for the enemies to move close together. Okay, so once that happens, see this is why I put it on wait, because when you put the uh, time, um, when you put the battle system on wait, when you go into the menu and select your commands, it actually freezes the action. So, with the way these enemies are set up, they're pretty close to each other, right? So let's set up Cyclone, and you can see right here that we can select both of them at the same time. And that's because whenever these enemies are gathered in a circle, um, you can basically use uh, Cyclone based on like where the enemy is at. Okay, so like this enemy is the center point right here, right? Because that's where we start our move. And the enemies around it are basically the enemies that are going to be affected by said move. And there's more to it than just like a wide range of like effectiveness too, like the Cyclone. We'll be going into different like tech types. Like some enemies will be affected depending on like the, the way they're lined up in a row or whether they're in a big group or circle. It's like a wide variety of things you have to like account for, you know? I know I, I know I said I would have talked about it in the next video, but like I forgot about these enemies that exist here <laughs> Just so much to go over man So we got a power glove uh, But the bandana doesn't really do much So uh, we're just gonna switch it out with this 
fact, I actually forget what the bandana does, come to think of it. Okay, so it brings up her speed by one. Just gonna organize that, and we're good to go. And we're gonna continue to be jerks by fighting these enemies, which looked like we're having a good time, but, uh... Eh, let's ruin the fun. So, stepping foot outside of the mountain here, we see that we're here, which kind of looks like the Guardia we know and love, but something about it seems a bit off. Something about it seems a bit less developed. So, on that note, we'll figure out more about the place we landed in in the next episode of Let's Play Chrono Trigger. So, stay tuned. Hope you guys are excited for the rest of the episodes in this ongoing Let's Play. And, uh, I'll see you guys then.